Summary blocks are one of my favorite types of content that we can add to a Squarespace website. A summary block in Squarespace displays content from a collection, specifically a blog or an event, uh, products or videos. Now, what the summary block can do is show a thumbnail, a title and the excerpt and have a link if it's a blog post to read more. These summary blocks, however, they're kind of basic. They don't really show a lot of creativity and we don't have a lot of design settings. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can customize them. I'm Becca Harpain from Inside the Square and all the codes I'm about to share with you are listed in the description below. But without further ado, let's make these summary blocks look unique. Here we are inside Squarespace, and here's just a little preview of all the fun codes we're going to cover in this video. In this first section, I have blog posts with a read more button that has a hover effect. If we scroll down here, this carousel looks pretty simple, but what we've done is move these arrows here down to the bottom of the items instead of the top right, so it's more obvious that there's content to scroll through. Then after that, we have an event that also has a hover effect and a background. Below that's one of my favorite hover effects when you hover over a product image. Inside this grid option here, you can see the description and the title and the price. Definitely a fun hover effect. Then last but not least, we have a video collection inside a wall summary block, and we've moved the metadata to appear on the top left-hand corner and styled it a little bit creatively for each individual item. Now, all of these codes are listed below and in the original blog post, and you'll find timestamps to jump ahead if you want to focus on any of these designs specifically. Before we hop into the code, I want to show you something super important. We're going to hop into edit mode, and I'm going to double click on one of my summary blocks. Over here is where I've selected the page type. You can choose any type of collection other than a portfolio of projects. Those don't work within summary blocks right now. But we have blog, course, events, store, and videos, and you'll find all five of them in this tutorial. Now, under the design tab is where you choose the style. You can have them display as a wall, carousel, list, or grid, and I strongly recommend playing around with those options until you find one that suits the style of your own unique site. After that, you choose the number of items that's being displayed, the text alignment, and then you'll find these elements. This read more link is only available for blogs, not for other content. And then we've got a few other options for adding a background to the entire block or a border like I have here. A border is also referred to as a stroke here in Squarespace, and I've added that line already. I did that using the editor. You don't need custom CSS to make that happen, and you can change all the details you want about the line, the padding, all of that kind of fun stuff right here in the editor. And last but not least, let's talk about the font colors. You don't need code to customize those. Hop into your site styles menu, open up your color options, and here select a color theme. And if you click on the content inside the page section, you'll see my list of options narrowed down, and I can change the header, title, excerpt, read more, metadata, and stroke color for a summary block right here in the editor. So again, we've got four layouts, wall, carousel, list, and grid. We've got different content options, an image, title, excerpt, metadata, and read more if it's a blog. You can add borders and backgrounds and font colors using the editor. But for all of this other fun stuff, we've got some code to play around with. So I'll select exit, and we're going to get to it. On the left-hand side of the screen, select pages, then select website tools, and then custom CSS. Now again, all of this code is underneath the video. I don't want you to be overwhelmed by any of this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove all of this code. So we're just gonna focus on one section at a time, okay? One summary block at a time. And this very first one is for the Polaroid blog. I called it a Polaroid because it reminds me of an old Polaroid photo, the way I've got the border around the image, but call it whatever you want. What we set up in this code is we first told the computer browser, when you see a summary item, give it a background that's orange. Add a little bit of padding, but make sure the padding at the bottom isn't too big. So if you want to change the background color, switch the word orange to something like yellow. That's way too bright. Let's try something like a hex color code for my favorite shade of teal here. There we go, a little bit more neutral, not as bright and dynamic as the yellow, but still something unique. Now, padding is what's creating this border around the image and the content. If I change this value to something like 10px, it's going to get a little bit smaller, so the content itself will look a little bit larger. Now, if we change it to something like 50px, notice how big the border is, but how much smaller the content is. We're not changing the shape of the item itself, we're changing the shape of the border around the content. Let me show you one more time. 10px versus 30px. Do you see how all the items stayed the same size, but all the content shifted? Pay super close attention to that padding if that's the code you're going to use. Now, underneath that is the fun stuff where we turn that read more link into a button. We gave it a unique background color. 
We added some padding, which is the distance here between the text and the edge of the button. We'll play around with this here and change it to 15. So you can see that makes the button way too big. It forces it to two lines. But if we make it 1px, it looks so much smaller and not like a very clickable button. So 5 was a perfect choice for the font size I'm using. I set the width of that button to 40% of the summary item itself. If we remove this code, it's going to stretch to be the whole width, which might be what you want. Super customizable, but for my design, I only needed it to take up about 40%. Play around with this value as you see fit. Then after that, I said text align center. If we remove this, it's going to scoot the text all the way over to the left. I thought text align center looked a lot better. Now, last but not least for this code right here, we added a hover effect. And I said on a hover, change the background to yellow and give it a box shadow. And that's what happens when we hover over this button. Just like the rest of our code, super customizable. Remove the shadow if you want. Change the background to something different. Maybe you want it to be a vibrant blue. And if we're going to do that, we might as well change the font color too. Let's change the font color to a solid white, the background to a vibrant blue, and we'll leave that box shadow. There we go. A unique hover effect taking place right there on our Squarespace website. All right, let's move on to our next one, where we shifted the arrows here for this carousel to the bottom of the list. Again, you'll find this code underneath the video and inside the original blog post. Now we shifted this carousel to make it easier to see that we can click through things here. If you know a lot about code, you'll understand changing the positions from relative and absolute and adjusting values like bottom, left, and width is what's creating this effect. Now, the only part of this code that I recommend customizing is this very last line right here that says margin left 45%. That's what places the arrows in the middle. If you want them to be closer to the left edge, maybe change it to 1%. And if you want them to be closer to the right edge, maybe try something like 90%. Very customizable, but again, this is the only value I recommend changing. And I also want to mention that these arrows are only visible if you've chosen the carousel layout. You won't find arrows for wall, list, or grid. This is just for carousel, and these arrows are navigatable as we click through the content. All right, let's move on to the next one where we added a creative background to these events. This is a super simple code that says, hey, computer, give these event summary items a background and add a little bit of padding. And on a hover, change that background to a different color and give them a box shadow. Now, when we hover over it, it has a shadow and a different color. But I want you to notice something super important about this code. Do you see this part at the very beginning? This right here is what's known as a block ID. This is me telling the computer browser, I only want you to change this specific content block. Every piece of content on a Squarespace website has a unique ID. This content block has what's known as a block ID. I quickly found this number using a free Chrome extension. I'll link to it underneath the video. Let me show you what this extension looks like. I'll click on it really quick. And you can see instantly, I've got the unique block ID for all of the content of my site. So let's say I love this effect, but I actually want this to happen for my blog post option up here. I'm gonna click on this block ID to copy it, and I'm gonna update my code so that it applies to this type of content block instead. Now I'm getting the same effect, but again, it's happening to this content block and nowhere else on my website. These block IDs are a really helpful thing to know if you want to customize one unique thing about Squarespace without affecting anything else. And again, I will link to that free Chrome extension underneath the video. Now I'll go ahead and turn it off. So we'll go back to our standard site and let's move on to one of my favorite creative summary block effects. And that is to create the hover reveal for these products. I'll remove this code for our events, and here it is, the content reveal for our products. Now, instantly, you'll notice the content or the description of the product, the title, the price, it all seems to have disappeared. But when I hover over the image, it's going to show up. This effect here is still going to make the image itself clickable. I can click on this item and I'll still go to the product itself, but it's going to reveal the content above the image. Now, the only part of this code that I want you to think about customizing is the opacity right here. That's the percentage of transparency for this image. Maybe 0.1, so it's barely visible will work for you. Maybe something like 0.6 so you can see the product a little bit better. That might be the right choice. Personally, 0.3 works pretty well for me so the content is still very visible and readable on top of the image. But again, this opacity is the only part I want you to adjust. The rest of this code is what's going to make it work, especially this part right here. 
This tells a computer browser to only make this change on any device larger than 950 in pixels in width, because there is no way to have a hover effect on a tablet or a mobile device. This needs to be desktop only, so this makes sure this hover effect only shows up on larger screens. For the mobile version of your website, I'll scroll all the way down, that summary block is still going to be displayed in the same format that it was before. This part of the code makes sure this only happens on larger screens where we have a cursor to create this hover effect. All right, we've got one final code to work with. I'll paste our code right here in the custom CSS and we'll see the changes instantly. Let me walk you through what we did here because we've got a lot more customization options for this one. The first thing we did was move that metadata to the top left-hand corner of the summary item itself. You can scoot it over to the right if you want to totally an option. I thought left looked pretty good for my design, but it's very customizable. And these values represent the distance between the metadata and the edge of the summary item. If I change this to top 15 and left 45, it's going to change the location of that date. Did you see how that moved around? Let's go ahead and move it back to five because I like that style. Perfect. Now, after that, we changed the background color. I just made it a solid white. I added a border radius, which curved the corners of it. See what happens when I remove that code? They then become 90 degree corners. So we'll leave border radius there because I like that rounded effect. I gave it a little bit of padding to give it some space between the number and the edge. If we remove that, you can see how tiny it gets. Doesn't look great with that border radius. So I'm going to put that back. And then, of course, my favorite, I gave it a box shadow. We can also do stuff with the content inside. Maybe you want the font to be a little bit bolder. You can say font weight bold and make the value stand out just a little bit more. Now, after that, I gave a border and a border radius to the entire summary item. Let's change the color of this so you can see what I'm talking about here. Maybe we want it to be a bright red, and maybe instead of solid, we want it to be dotted. We can get super creative with our borders here. Personally, I thought the solid and that teal were perfect for my design. Now, I also gave it a border radius of 15px, and that has a lot to do with this code right underneath it as well. Watch what happens, and I remove the code for the image. Do you see how the image now has 90 degree corners on top of the border for the summary item? I did not like that look. So I had to add a custom code that would curve the top left and top right corners of the image so it worked with the rest of the summary item. These codes right here create those rounded corners. If you don't like those, remove them completely and you'll have 90 degree corners for the item and the image. And then last but not least, I gave a little bit of padding to the summary content. If I remove this code, it's going to be right up against the edge of the border, and I didn't like that very much, so I gave it a little bit of padding so there's a little bit more space between the edge and the content. Definitely a fun code that you can get really creative with, and again, you'll find it underneath this video. Let's do a super quick recap here. I'm going to scroll back up so we can see the original state of all of this magic, and I'll paste all of the codes we used right here in our CSS. This very first summary block is a wall display with a read more link enabled for blog posts. And we used this code right here to give it a background color, some unique padding, and to turn that read more link into a button with a hover effect. Underneath that, we have a carousel of the lessons inside our course. And we used this code right here to move the carousel arrows from the top right corner to be underneath the lessons. So it's clear that we can navigate through that content. Underneath that, we have a list of events with a unique background color and a cool hover effect that changes the background color and gives it a box shadow so it pops off the page. That happens to be this code right here. Underneath that, we've got my favorite hover effect, the product reveal. This is a summary block grid for products in my store. And when you hover over an image of a product, it will display the title, price, and description, but only on screens that are larger than 950 pixels in width, only on screens that have cursors. That's a super important part, and you'll find this code labeled below and in my original blog post as the product reveal. Then last but not least, we have the video wall. If we scroll down here, this particular design has a unique border and it moves the metadata. So it's displayed on top of the image with a unique background and a box shadow. That happens to be this code right here. Now, in a lot of these codes, you're going to see I've labeled them with a the block ID. If you plan to use summary blocks a lot and you don't want them all to look the same, make sure you use the unique block ID. That information can be found using the Chrome extension linked below. 
And I think that's a good spot to call it a wrap. Underneath this video, you'll find all of the codes that we use to customize those summary blocks and links to related resources that can help you customize your Squarespace website even more. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. I'm Becca Harpain from Inside the Square, and I've got a lot more to teach you about all the cool things that Squarespace can do. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and follow for more. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Good news, Squarespacer. We finally have an AI that truly understands Squarespace. Meet Custom Cody. Built specifically for Squarespace users and trained on every nuance of the program, Custom Cody is your AI-powered assistant for effortless expert-level Squarespace customization. Available now at customcody.com.